It's a golden tail gecko. Almost looks like the darts of a leopard. Look at that. My name's Jack Randall, and I'm a zoologist. The carnivorous predator. I'm showing you every animal on the planet. Come on, let's go. I'm here in the Brigolo eco-region of Australia, and here is a specific tree, the cypress pine. It's this particular tree which is the habitat for my target species tonight. It's one of the most beautiful geckos in the entire world. It's called the golden-tailed gecko. So I'm gonna go back to the car and get my torches ready and wait for the nightfall. There's a particular strategy to make it much easier to spot the golden-tailed gecko, which otherwise would be like looking for a needle in a haystack. The gecko's eyes actually shine back the light of my torch. So what you need to do is hold your torch as close to your eyes as possible. And as the light is shining forwards, and if there is a gecko, his eyes will bounce back the light into my eye. It's not just the geckos coming out at night all sorts of other nocturnal creatures are coming out. So I'm just keeping an eye out on the forest floor as well. Snake! Woo! It's a little blind snake. It's got very, very, very small eyes. So it's basically blind, hence his name, but very primitive. So they're almost able just to sense light and dark, but well, they wouldn't be able to see much more than that, but they'll be using their sense of smell through that forked tongue to be able to determine where a good nest is to hunt. Happy hunting. So there's a lot of pine trees in this forest. It's all about searching, searching, searching until we find our target species. Small-eyed snake, they are very, very quick. Calm down, calm down, calm down. Small-eyed snake, yes! It's venom. It's known to be particularly potent and has caused fatalities. Interestingly, the, uh, the blind snake has those really primitive eyes. The small-eyed snake as well, as, as the name suggests, has really tiny black eyes. So they're not using their eyesight as a, as a way of, of getting around and hunting. And this one is an active predator. Um, it's actually using its forked tongue. There we go. The golden-tailed gecko, on the other hand, does use a keen eyesight to hunt. Sitting in ambush on a tree, face down, ready to snatch insects into its jaw as they fly by. Yes. It's a golden-tailed gecko. Wow, wow, wow. That is the most amazing looking gecko you could ever see. There's a reason why herpetologists from all around the world come to see this gecko out in the wild, only found in this particular eco-region, inland Australia, the golden-tailed gecko. And you can see why it's so special. Not the biggest gecko in the world, but the colorations. Look at that tail. Oh, that's quite that bright stripe that comes along the whole base of that tail. Unbelievably delicate looking gecko. And then you see those eyes, bright red. Geckos have incredible eyesight. They have a huge amount of capillaries in those eyes. They're able to see almost perfectly in pitch black. Even with the tiniest little bit of light coming from the moon, that's enough for the gecko to be able to see. And of course, I haven't even mentioned the one thing that this gecko is able to do. There's no other gecko in the world that's able to eject from glands all along that tail a sticky goo and that is able to deter potential predators. You can see in this tree, in all the trees around here, you might have nests of birds, the owls. They might see a gecko like this. They've also got great eyesight and then would want to eat this gecko. But the gecko, as a last resort, will actually stick it up and then squirt that goo at it. I'm gonna gently pick him up and have a nice closer look. Now, it's not just that golden tail that I think is why this gecko is almost a prized gecko in, in, in the herpetological world. It's also just that coloration of that, that the whole gecko, this kind of mottled black and white pattern gives it almost a, a leopard print. Incredible. 
There's a real conservation story to be told with this gecko, that they are living on the cypress pine trees. This is where they live. Now, this habitat is actually being deforested constantly. Uh, all around me, um, there's, there's forest, but then there's a whole mosaic of farmland. And so there's a kind of tug of war between farmland and this Brigalow belt forest, where, especially where the cypress pine trees are. And so this gecko, without that habitat, is actually got nowhere to live. And recently they've been listed as vulnerable to extinction because of that. And so you, sometimes you have to think, well, the gecko, it's amazing how they can be so specialized to a particular habitat, even though they're eating the same insects. No, it's this gecko, if it goes into another forest, he'll be competing with other tree geckos. In this habitat, this one is the king. It's the golden tail gecko that lives here and no one else, no other gecko is able to compete against him. Wow. Wow, thanks for letting us spend time with you, Mr. Gecko. The golden tail gecko. Yes.